Welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. This episode is with Moody Jones, who is the Senior Vice President of Digital and Creative at Empire. And he's worked with quite a few very rad artists. In this episode, we talk a lot about understanding rules, but then breaking them and breaking them for reasons of pushing boundaries and pushing culture and music forward. He's got a really cool take on music and he's really, really good at thinking about how to promote music and how to do things differently. And those are conversations that I love having. So let's leave the intro super short and get right into it. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Let's go. Where are all my friends? Moody Jones. I'm excited for this one for a couple reasons. One, because we've really just met each other and I have a great amount of fun with guests when I'm learning in real time. But I'm also excited because from everything I do know about you, you have a pretty accomplished career. And I think we have a similar mindset or bits of our stories of like doing a fucking lot of things mm -hmm. to get to where mm -hmm. we have gotten. Absolutely. But I think that that gives you so much solid ground to speak on and so much experience and like you're qualified to speak on quite a lot in music. And uh, this podcast talks about music a lot. So I think this will work out well. That sounds good. <laughs> and this is totally organic. We actually just did meet. Yeah. We've seen each other for like 10 minutes now. Um, so Andrew, thanks for having me. I'm excited uh, to get to know you. Yeah, and uh, just chop it up, talk about music. And for the listener, the the 10 minute vibe is good. Right. We have been vibing, so yeah. uh, I'm feeling good about this. The way that I like to start it is for anybody who doesn't know who you are, just a quick explanation of who you are and what you do. Cool. I'm the uh, senior vice president of digital and creative at Empire. I'm, I'm also a artist myself. And I also have an agency called Everybody Knows, which does uh, music marketing for independent artists. And I also have a clothing label called Edoom, which does um, clothing made out of burqas because uh, I grew up in Saudi Arabia and, and women were forced to wear burqas. And so I thought, let's take burqas and make men wear them. And so now it's a unisex line. I'm funny sometimes. I don't know if I'll be funny today. <laughs> you can't uh, say that now because you put yourself on know. the spot. The listen, they're going to be like, he said he was funny and I didn't I don't laugh know. once. So, uh, but yeah, and uh, that, that's me. <laughs> I love that. That says it really well. That says it really, really well. And even in you saying that, I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't realize <laughs> that much of it. Damn, okay. <laughs> so this is cool. Um, another piece is I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a different type of episode with you because you are a guest that has done a lot of other podcasts. And I feel less bad about not telling your entire life story because okay. it's out there a little bit more and you've spoken on a lot of specific topics. Mm -hmm. So I think for a lot of this podcast, I want to talk about what you're excited about currently, like right now. And I think that that'll be a really fun direction. And I think there's a couple things we could get into, but again, out of context and right. not to fully, fully jump the gun. Right. If you would share the quick version of you kind of just coming to finding music and like finding this, this lane. So um, I, I, I was born in Cairo. I grew up in Saudi. That was uh, in Saudi, um, music was pretty much illegal. My music was illegal. I listened to heavy metal and heavy metal was banned. Uh, no one. Yeah, you, what do you mean? Like, how's that work? Like, like you I, can't, you can't, they don't sell it. Okay. Um, if they sell stuff, like I remember Nirvana's cover. Yeah. The baby was censored. Oh my God. Yeah. If any artist was a female, they won't sell it. What? Um, it was, it was crazy. And I, I list, I grew up on, on, on Limp Bizkit and Corn and Slipknot. Like that's the shit I used to listen to. Bro. Yes. And that shit was illegal. And so my friends had to buy it and we'd smuggle it in. So like when like for us kids here, like the parental advisory stickers and hiding it from our parents, like, no, 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 that's cute. You were over here. No, it was straight up illegal. Smuggling. It was literally, it was like, it'd be in my suitcase and I'm fucking shivering at the airport because if oh, they catch the shit, you know God. what I'm saying? I didn't realize till I got older, but that bond you have with that music is different. Yeah. It's like today, you know how people have that love for vinyl? Yeah, finding that vinyl that's so hard to get. Yeah, imagine your life being on the line because you're listening to a song. That's <laughs> fucking um, insane, dude. Like you're telling me this, and I feel like it's like a movie. Like I yeah. actually can't imagine what that must be like. Yeah, and you know, so like combined 
you know, me and my friend, we used to call us the Biscuit Gang. Uh, it was <laughs> because me, of Limp Biscuit. Yeah, we were three guys: Biscuit, Biscuit Jones, Biscuit Blair, and Biscuit Punk. And that those Which were, one our, were you? I'm Biscuit Jones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and um, we would like, you know, he had the Corn CD, he had the Lincoln Park CD, I had the Limp Biscuit CD, and like we could, we didn't have more copies. We couldn't get more copies, so. We'd hang out with each other all day because that's the only way I could listen to this. You end up like knowing the back cover, the artwork, every every word, the credits, everything, because it meant so much to you. Like I had this crazy, I, I, I was always into music. Like my I used to make, when I was a kid, I'd make Disney mixtapes. I'd go get all the Disney tapes and I'd pick my favorite songs. Yo. And then I'd put them all on a tape and and and, and I'd give them to my friends and shit that was my first set was i guess was a disney set yeah and, <laughs> <Holy shit. laughs> uh, and i remember i used the i used the i think it was lion king lion king's tape was glow in the dark oh, which shit. none of the other tapes were so i used that one for my mixes oh, and shit. uh and yeah and then like i'd like put marker on it and all that and fast forward um i ended up moving to canada when i was 17 didn't know anyone there moved by myself i was in engineering school and um, I remember, like, I didn't know anyone. I moved to Montreal. I, I went there for 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 college because in Saudi there was no English colleges, and so for me to continue my education, I had to move. And so I moved there solo, without your family. Yeah, I was completely solo. Um, and it was like the first time I see snow. I remember it was like New Year's. A month later, Slipknot was in town. Oh shit! And I had never been to a concert in my life, and I was like, I'm fucking going. I'm, I don't know what this is. I have to go to the show. And I remember uh, I went to the show and uh, I went by myself and like, I had never seen a mosh pit. You know, I've only seen it in their music videos, shit like that. And I, and I, I remember it was, I don't, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but it was minus 30 Celsius, which I'm guessing is minus I, don't I know, think four hundred Fahrenheit I translates don't know. <laughs> to fucking cold <laughs> <Yeah>. in any <laughs> degree. Yeah. And um, I remember being in the mosh pit and uh, I remember, I swear, I, I remember like not being able to breathe and like everyone, I was so claustrophobic. I was like, I'm, I'm going to fucking die in a mosh pit. And I'm like, this, this sucks. Man's first I'm going to die. I'm going to die at a Slipknot concert. And I remember like not being able to breathe. And then I remember looking up, trying to catch my breath. And all of a sudden I just, I was like, this is exactly where I wanted to be. This is exactly where, what I wanted. And, and like my mind just shifted and I just caught this breath and I just fucking destroyed everyone in the smosh pit. And I was like, I love this. And then I went into my like crazy, I went to like every heavy metal show for like three years. I had my Converse said not emo on them. Yes. Um, I had like, you know, straight hair. And uh, I went, I was just like in it. And everyone knew me in the heavy metal scene. I was always the guy, like, you know, crowd surfing and doing all the shit. Then I got into house music and then I became the guy about house music. And then uh, I started throwing parties. Okay. And I started throwing these parties under uh, Everybody Knows. That was the name. Oh, of wow. So that goes back. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the idea of Everybody Knows was I just like loved so many artists that didn't get the attention they deserved. And a lot of them were in Montreal. And so, I'd book big artists and I'd get someone local to open up for them. Sometimes I'd get them to close so that everybody can know about these local acts. I remember Disclosure booking Yo. them for a thousand bucks. Holy shit. Um, and didn't fill the place. And I remember K Trinata opening up for me. <laughs> and it was me, K Trinata, and Bondax. And it was a free show. Free show. Okay. All ages half capacity oh, uh man. and uh but but that's how long ago like like i was on that trip. yeah like how early you were seeing yeah. stuff happening at the time wow this is really not a quick story fuck it's uh, okay it's okay <laughs> this is i like this yeah. because it, it just sets it up it lets you yeah. understand like not only are you qualified to speak on what you're speaking on but it's just like i find it so fascinating to understand where people's love for this came from yeah because like i'm over here and i never would have thought that you would have grown up listening to heavy metal or finding limp biscuit and lincoln park and those were some of the first artists that yeah. i found where best, I was like, best day of my life is meeting limp biscuit best day of my life dude right 100 like, damn 100 that's the funny story i'll tell you about it mm -hmm. after but so by night i was doing these events 
um by day i was working at like ad agencies uh, and in between i would go to school mm. um and i did that for like four years finished my engineering degree and then i was like dad i love you but i cannot be an engineer i cannot be responsible for anyone's life period mm. i can't be responsible <laughs> for buildings i don't i just don't want i can't not no, me it's not it and then i was like please let me do marketing and then i studied marketing and when i was in school i started working for a porn company whoa interesting yeah twist um oh. and then i did i did marketing for porn for whoa. three years um so anytime you went to a porn site all those porn ads you saw <laughs> you're welcome were, right. were you promoting other porn or was it like other it would be like webcam like... girls porn sites uh okay dick so growing who, pills whoever chose to market on a porn site. yeah so all the ads on porn sites that was my job wow. um did and, that like destroy a little bit of your soul or absolutely was it... <laughs> it was terrible it was so bad i'm i'm not i'm not very good like practicing muslim but like i do what i can mm. try and do that shit fasting oh my god it's like it's like 8 a.m. in the morning. I'm looking at like squirting videos. It's insane. Um, it was hard. And and I'm oh, so many stories. I remember one time we didn't tell someone came for a job interview and she didn't know it was a porn company and she was covered and everyone was too afraid to go tell her. Oh, <laughs> and she was no. like sitting in the conference room. Eventually, like I was like, HR has to do this. I'm not going to go. Don't pick the Arab to go tell the other Arab. Yeah, this that's is not a porn fair. company. That's not fair. So I did that for three years. And then... Um, my roommate was also the head programmer at the company. Mm. Um, he came up with this crazy idea and I loved it. We both quit and we started this idea, which believe it or not, was an HR company. The company got picked up for, from an accelerator program. You know what that is? An, an, acce an accelerator program? Not so for this application. Explain, please. So an accelerator program is like, um, think of it like a VC house. Oh, yeah. Oh, like Silicon Valley, yeah, like the yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So we got picked up from an accelerator program, and they were like, "Cool, we'll fund you. You guys were gonna have this office. You guys are gonna live here for six months, and Holy crap. and the goal is to take you from here to here." Wow. So we did this HR software, which I th I still think is revolutionary, but it's not my business anymore. <laughs> um, and then by the end of it, uh, basically our main investor was like, "Hey, this is a great idea. I love everything. I just can't have." two porn people running this company so i'm gonna buy you guys out Aww. i was like cool sounds good and so he bought us out we didn't make money but like we didn't lose money i was like without a job for like a month or two and then he hit me up the main investor he's like listen i'm investing in this music company and i know from like kind of living with you the last six months no one knows more about music more than you no one knows more about ads than you because you used to do porn ads so this company was doing remix competitions but they were trying to pivot from from doing remixes to essentially doing marketing. So he's like, "Why don't you go talk, have a talk with the CEO, do an interview, see what happens?" I'm like, Dude, "Cool." You were probably really excited because oh, like yeah. this represented a, a way to return to doing something that you were clearly passionate about. Hundred hundred percent. Just being in the. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be like a fancy job, and it was a startup. But I was sure. like, "Let's do it." So, fuck. There's so many details. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut them out. Um, dude i mean it's fine like i, I love the story cool I love the story <laughs> so he's like here's the guy's number his name is connor clark uh hit him up y'all should hang out and have an interview i'm like cool randomly i end up meeting connor at a club the next day wow um so we, i bump into him i forgot what party it was we're both hella lit my personality i i just I just tell people what I don't like right away. Mm. So I was like, you know what I don't like about your company? And I just blasted him because wow. I had done my research. I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Yeah. And you're, I don't like you. And I don't like your attitude. <laughs> I just went off. Right. And then two days go by and then I, I check my voicemail and he's like, yo, like what happened? Um, I thought you were supposed to come in for an interview. I call him back. I'm like, what interview? He's like, bro. We when I saw you at the club the other day, I told you to come in for an interview. Oh my god! I was like, bro, I thought we had a horrible conversation and we hated each other. He's like, no, I loved it. He's like, you challenged everything. You did all this. I'm like, bro, I honestly don't remember. I'm so sorry. So then I went in for the interview. I got the job, and at the time, uh, I think we were like four people in this office. At the time, they were still doing remix competitions. They were probably doing about fifteen hundred in revenue a month. 
uh but it was like a startup there was lots of investors it was fine yeah and then i think a year later we were working with frank ocean holy shit yeah and then by the time i left um we were doing around half a million a month wow in revenue yeah. and what turned that around so much like you guys just getting good at ads or the company just naturally growing like what i think we were at the right place at the right time yeah i mean this is like seven years ago mm. that was right when everything was moving to more legit streaming yeah um, that where, reminds me of like was it like the days of hype them do you remember exa- hype exactly Machine? yeah so how Bro, I'm so happy you brought that up. So oh, I fucking lived on uh, yeah. that shit. Dude. So our our one of our main things is like so we had a a native ad on mm-hmm. Hype Machine. Oh, right. And so when you're on Hype Machine, while you're browsing music, there'll be a section that says top trending music. Yeah, and it would have four songs. That's an ad, but people thought it was oh my Hype Machine. And you guys had those songs. The, those those songs were ads that we ran, and so we did that with Hype Machine. Um, the song is sick. Um, mu- magnetic music, uh, hype beast, like a bunch of sites. We had yeah. like thirty sites, like the good, credible music blogs. At the time. When that was it, the exactly. Thing. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. And, yeah. So then we, it was really easy for us to like everyone wanted to be on. It was the selling point was like everyone wanted to be on those websites, and you had it. Figured and we out. just have it through an ad, and people won't really realize um well that and you could probably say like okay cool you want to be on hype um exactly we got you there but we can also hit all of these exactly and then there's also reporting like this is how many people saw it this how many people clicked and then and then we started doing crazy campaigns like for zoo i think we had all the ads be like static screens for the first five seconds and then it would say z like all four would be like a z and an h and a u and then the flag oh shit like we started doing creative things like that yeah which connor hated but that's yeah. the shit i love to do it was like right. hey how do we how do we make this different how do you right? disrupt something how do you um, do something different? but good on him connor he you know now that company is like top 20 fastest growing i think in canada or something wow, or cool. top 20 in the whole music industry and uh, they're like Atlantic's main partner. While I was there, I learned a lot about creating ads and Google video and Facebook ads and all that stuff. And then yeah. I, I started doing it. I just it got to a point where the company grew so much that it wasn't suitable anymore for a developing act. Yeah. You know, so yep. it's hard for you to work with a client who spends 10x. Yeah. And then you get a client that wants to spend X and and be able to deliver the same results or give them the same kind of attention. And that artist that pays X, that's my kind of artist. Like, yeah, I feel you. you it's know? like, it's a really weird, sad thing when what you love has done so well that it then boxes you out of doing and the thing you love and working exactly. with the people you love. Exactly. And it's... um. I, I remember because we worked with Atlantic, we worked with Warner, we worked with RCA, Republic Capital, and then Apple Music directly, Spotify directly. And I remember anytime we had suggestions, mm. the label would be like, cool, let me get back to you. A month will go by and they'll be like, sorry, we can't do that. Just stick to what we sent. Yeah. And by then it's like, bro, the album already came out. <laughs> yeah. you, it already flopped. Yeah. And now it's been a month and now you're letting me know. Empire was the only one that i would be like hey this would kind of be cool if we changed this and did that and they'd be like just fucking do it yeah and i was like okay that's my first impression of empire i was like they're the only label that was like oh just if it looks better just do it like yeah that's a no-brainer that's awesome and then i realized that when i became part of empire i realized it's because of that it's because it's an independent label and yeah yeah yeah. they're empowered to have like that ethos that lets you do that if you know the person you're talking to is the person in charge Mm -hmm. there's no let me go check with the team this is the team that's so great then a lot of the things that you know wavo grew so much that they can customize to every client's needs Mm -hmm. and i really liked empire so i just started working with them direct i'm like whatever you need i'm gonna do whatever you need i'm gonna do and then um eventually uh i met with them and um we hit it off i was their first digital hire wow um and i kind of built i ended up building wavo basically or an agency inside their company um and and now you know we do about 300 campaigns a month at least 
Holy shit. Yeah. And what a smart hire on their end to see a you of the world and to bring you in as well. I'm I'm hella lucky. I, I got really lucky and but every day uh every day I wake up, I'm like, I can't believe that's my my life. I can't believe that's my job. I can't believe that's the people I talk to every day. Like I'm yeah. you know, worst case scenario, worst day is I ended up listening to a bunch of new music. <laughs> worst day. Yeah. Like but don't you think like I feel you like I definitely agree with you of like those feelings of like holy shit I'm so lucky to do this but that that also comes with being the person that doesn't get complacent like you could have just stayed and been like all right cool full on ads don't care if I'm losing my passion for right. it like it's a check but you were aware of that in yourself and you're like I want to work something like this like right. Other people could have gone to Empire and built what you built or that, you know, dynamic before you got to the spot of having that job. Right. So it's like, hell yeah, you are lucky. But I think that your personality and your interests in the work that you did very much qualified you and led you to that where you were the no-brainer person. I, I, I mean, I've never been good at following rules. I just don't like rules. Mm. Um, this is going to sound stupid, but I think, I think rules are for average people. Wow. I think I think rules are guidelines for the average person. That's just my opinion. And so I see whatever the rule is and I'm like why is that rule there and if it doesn't apply to me I don't do it. Last year everyone was for example I was the most person in the world that traveled. Mm. Um because no one was traveling, but also I was like I don't understand why I can't travel that makes no sense. Mm. So I just traveled everywhere I could possibly go that was open. And I was like, ever, ever since then, I was like, there really is no rules. Like yeah. they can't be telling people to sit at home or do whatever. And I'm like flying all, all over the world. The, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. these rules, like, I, but for the average, it's, it's good for all of us. It's best if we do this, but. Um, I have a similar feeling or maybe I could further elaborate on that point of like, I think rules are great to understand. I think before you break rules, you should understand why they're there. Yeah. When you're educated and you fully understand a rule, you can right. say, okay, cool. I get it. I completely right. understand why it's been there. But because I fully understand it, I understand the, I understand the consequences that could right. happen if I break it. Right. But I also have a full understanding of it and I am choosing to break it. And like, I don't know, like hundred percent. Like, I'm, I mean, when I said the average person, I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying correct. that most likely that rule applies to, to most people but if you understand that right then well, it, and it doesn't make sense to you and also the other thing is a lot of rules also don't get updated sure which, you know sure. what i'm saying like but like okay something that i think about joji right mm -hmm. he has a track attention right. where the bass clips like a motherfucker right right, right. that traditionally a rule right. like if you were going to school and learning how to produce right they'd be like you don't do that you're not going to clip your bass and bounce it out like that yeah that's clearly him saying, okay, cool, I get that. I'm going to destroy this and distort it to all hell. Yeah. And that's what's going to make it cool. That, so it's like you it. have to understand the fundamentals. Right. And when you get that and you know why you're breaking it and you're doing it at the right times for the right reasons, right. then you're pushing culture forward and you're doing things Absolutely. and you're challenging and, ideas. And, and, and for artists, which is great we're saying this because then we can bring it back to artists. Yeah. There is no rule for an artist. Like, there's no such thing as it ha you have to put out an album. Oh my Go god, I tour. love where you're going with you this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But like, all these rules are set where there's like a certain. As soon as music switched to to, to streaming, yep, the entire timeline of how an artist progresses was broken down completely. And you know, sev from the 70s up to the 2000s, it's you had a song, your label pushed it out. You made a music video, the, the song girl, then you went to the charts, then yep. you went on tour, then your song goes on the radio. That's, a, that's how it progresses. Straight up a formula. Now you can go from TikTok to radio. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You could go to radio and have no streaming numbers. You can sell merch and your song isn't even on streaming. Like everything is so like broken down now and, and, and there's no one traditional way to do it yes and because of that no rules should apply like you can't put rules on artists correct and something like so now this is great because this is a lot of what i wanted to talk to you about and what's kind of current top Perfect. of head yeah. so just quickly so you now work at empire and that brings us up to where you're at right. now you do a lot of cool stuff so things that are exciting so like on that i think that 
defining success as an artist. Mm -hmm. And it's so asinine to just take this copy paste formula and say, this is what success means as an right. artist. And so many people in the industry or, or around an artist can just go into a project and right. just assume like, all right, well, we got to start, we got to find the single, we got to get ready for the album rollout, right. we got to get ready to get you on tour. And it's like, have you defined that with the artist? Is exactly. that really what the artist wants for success? Like, you are, if you are listening to this or you're talking about this as an artist, have you defined your own success? Right. Do you want to be on the road eight months out of the year? Do you want to write an album? Would you rather just do singles? Do you care more about your visuals? Like, I loved what you were saying on that. So I'd love to hear you elaborate more on that. You asking me to kind of tell my story. I think I realized where I got that from is when I went from working at an agency to having my own agency. Every time I spoke to an artist or client, when we're on a call, I always ask, what are you measuring success as personally, right? And I always say that, and you, you can ask anyone on my team. <laughs> These are always word for word what I say. I'm like, I want to make sure we're both running towards the same finish line. You know, so what is success to you? Because if you say it's followers, if you say it's views, whatever it is, I want to make sure we're both driving there so that we both know if this was a good campaign, if this was successful or not. Dude. And from doing that, I, I learned that I always ask the artists now, you know, whether I'm signing them, whether I'm like helping them, whether whatever it is, I'm like, yo, so we're clear. What is it? What is your end goal from this? So, so that's what I started applying a lot to working with artists. And, you know, sometimes I know artists are just trying to be one hit wonders, but they're, I'm not going to say they're afraid to mm -hmm. say it, but because there's that natural progression that everyone wants from you, yeah. They they won't say that. But like I would res I, you know if if you're just clear about what your goal is, you yeah. know, I just I just want a quick check and bounce. Th that's, that's great. Fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's real gangster shit. Like just say that. Dude, and even actually taking that as such a right. great example. Right. TikTok right now. Right. You can't, you cannot talk about marketing and music and not right. have somebody be like, well, are you on TikTok? Right. But it's like, okay, great, cool. So you figured out, you have your moment, you're blessed by the TikTok gods and you go right. viral, right? Well, then what's going to happen? Labels are going to come to you as right. soon as you have that moment or that song or whatever. But yeah, dude, like that's even like Lil Nas X. Like you talk about defining your success. So like, cool, you have your viral TikTok moment. Mm -hmm. And then it's like for him, it was like, all right, you could cash in and take a huge advance and basically just accept like, cool, you got my viral song. You paid me for it. I'm a chill. I'm good. Right. Or you can be like, sweet. This was my intro to the spot. Like this got me into the spotlight. Right. Jokes on you. I'm a real artist. I have so much more depth. Here's everything that I want to do. I stand for so much. I have a story and thanks for the platform to get me to be able to tell it. Right. So it's like, again, defining success and neither one of them is wrong, but I think it's important to know you know we were talking about you know the, the the finding the success no one is talking about the failures that are happening from the number of artists that are getting signed from tiktok and nothing happens holy fuck you're right they only talk about like you know Lil nas x you know or well there's like a handful that have made it everyone will talk about those but there's literally thousands of artists that get signed from tiktok because you realize they can't write they can't tour. Yeah. <laughs> they can't really sing. Yeah. They have the following. You know what I'm saying? And labels are taking those bets. And they're taking those bets. But but that's the labels themselves were are breaking the rules against what it takes to sign an artist. Wow. True. You know what I'm saying? True. So if you're breaking the rule of what it takes to sign an artist, why aren't you letting the artist also break the rules of, of around what it takes to be successful? You know? Um and 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 it's 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 so funny. Like when when we were growing up, it was like, or actually till now, all the all the rappers wanted to be basketball players, and all the <laughs> basketball players <laughs> wanted to be rappers. And now it's like all the artists want to be TikTok famous, and all the TikTokers <laughs> want to be singers. And then uh, you could take it a step further, yeah. and all the hip hop kids want to be rock stars, yeah, and all the rock stars exactly. want to do something that's not rock. Exactly. Yeah, you know. And um, Thug Thug just did that trying to which I respected him trying to like differentiate because every, you know, he's like, I, I can't come out looking like everyone else. Yeah. So I'm going to do something completely different. So let's talk about that for a sec. Please. Um, one thing uh, I know, like people don't take into consideration 
but they say an artist fell off and they say or like they don't put out new music or they didn't put out new albums or in my opinion the reason that that happens today is back in the day you put out a project no one had an opinion Mm. this is my project like it or you don't like it this is my project today you put out something and whether you like it or not you have to hear everyone's feedback yo and you have to get compared to other people and that shit happens publicly so you end up feeling no matter what i do it's not going to be good enough and so then you have two routes one either i'm gonna not put out anything which is why you'll have artists like rihanna or whoever who won't put out music because they're frustrated or it's like right you know everything is under such scrutiny and and even now you know when i if i put out music five years ago i'd be competing with my peers Mm. but if i put out music now i'm competing with people that literally did not exist a year ago which is insane and so that's the one route and the second one is like i'll put it and i'll take the heat Mm. and it is what it is Mm. people are always like people are going to complain but that's the reality of it and like you us humans like for some reason that one negative comment will really trump the hundred positive comments it's just the way it is yeah and that's why you have tons of artists who like refuse to be on instagram you know like like the j coles or the childish gambinos or whatever because as artists they're like i want to put out my projects yeah free of input yeah but then you have artists who can take all that input and can produce with it which is which is be- which is a whole nother thing on its own. Like, I don't know how you can do that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, where do you think that goes? Like, is there a solution to that? Like, is have we created our own monster? Like, I think about that sometimes, too. Yeah. And I, it, it's just like, where? It's, it's, it's really hard to want to create and present art um, without anyone's input anymore. It sucks. Like, when, when, you, when you do a painting... The cool thing about a painting is there's no is it good or bad it's whatever you take from it yeah but with music unfortunately there's rankings to it like you you judge music by its sales you can judge music by there's so many metrics there's so many metrics but with 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 art it's really whatever the value is you put into it and 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 and, you know there's no streaming platform for art you know you can't just it's not available at your fingertips where you can just say, do not show me this anymore or show me more like this. The way we consume music, I'm fucking guilty. Sure. Um, you know, every Friday I listen to 40 new records or 50 new records and I forget about the last 50 records I heard. And now when I listen to these songs, I skim through them. I skip through them. I yep. save like two out of the 50 and I move on. Yep. My behavior as a listener has shifted to abuse Mm, mm. abuse music like i treat it like shit okay now check it out because i could challenge you i agree with you and Mm. i do feel the like problem of that however i had this conversation in a different lens with somebody and i was like damn where i also feel like we're in this renaissance of music right where because anyone can create music and it doesn't it the barrier to entry is so much less right figure out a daw produce your own music Mm -hmm. upload it and you're on spotify up with like the top with the greats right Mm -hmm. so as a consumer and like talking about it it's like we now get this influx of art and i think that that is sick i think that more and more people can express themselves and create art and i love that but i just it's that side that negativity side of that you say that i agree with that it's like where is that middle ground where is that solution where like we have a little bit more of an attention span or we don't need to weigh in and shit on or give our two cents to anything that isn't perfect in our eyes right because if you take the positive side of it and you see that like so many more people have a platform to create i think that's a good thing the more art you can have in the world fuck yeah sign me up but i don't know if if that were true there would be so much less um expectations on how your music has to get delivered Mm, i think i might have answered it in my head it comes back to defining your success well but i mean like now you can't you know back in the day songs were twice as long as what they are now Mm -hmm. so if we're saying that 
there's a renaissance of music, mm. but that renaissance of music actually added a lot more constraints of how long my song can be. You know, we're, we're also became so much more single driven versus album driven. Mm. And, the, and the, real, the reason that is, is because we don't give a fuck about most artists. Truth. That you only listen to an album when you understand an artist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And because we don't understand any of these artists, because we don't give a fuck about most of them, we only listen to their singles and that's it. And so even with this renaissance, renaissance of music, we're actually constricting a lot of artists from putting out what their whole body of work. And wow. you know what I'm saying? We're, we're just getting their, their bangers and that's it. You're, yeah, that's interesting because again, I could even tie this back to like the rules and like rules being meant to be broken, whatever. Like, okay, cool. So, renaissance of music, influx of music, right. shorter attention span. Right. So, if you look at it from the glass half full side, like, yeah, cool, you have all these artists, but it's now something to understand. It's like if you want the attention, right. you're probably going to have to write the shorter song. Right. And you can view that as challenge accepted and you can break True. rules and do it in a different way. Right. Uh, but you're also maybe not wrong to be like, fuck this. I'm going to sit this side out because I'm trying to create something beautiful. And if you're not going to pay attention, then fuck it. Something that I've struggled with a lot is when you submit music, mm. you have to put a genre. Mm. And whatever genre it is, is how it's going to get reviewed. And if it doesn't fall under certain genres, it, it just won't fly. Sure. Yeah. And which is insane. It's true. Or I'm even thinking in real time right now, like, with a podcast, right. I can see the trends. I know that the shorter, it's the same exact thing, shorter attention span, shorter right. podcasts. But I look at it and I'm like, okay, like I can look at the trends and I, I want to follow. I want, the, I want it to grow. But I ultimately have this moment of creative integrity mm -hmm. where I say, I don't really give a fuck. I don't need to appeal to the mainstream. I want to have a meaningful conversation. And if that takes an hour plus, cool. If right. you want to listen, awesome. Thanks. If not, that's fine. So that's another thing with artists too. It's just like defining your success. Like so, you can play by those rules and you can see that. And if you really want that viral I, song. I, I just think there's so much creativity that can be done with, for example, um, I don't know if we ended up doing it, but last year I had this idea because like the whole notion with like vinyl is like limited, right? And streaming mm. is like unlimited. Yeah. So I was like, what if, and everyone's always fighting to get the most streams in mm -hmm. the shortest amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what if we, you know, flip the script? What if we had an artist drop a record, but you can only stream it a million times and the countdown goes from that one million works. to zero. And then we try and break the record that way. <laughs> And then after that, you have to buy the vinyl to hear You know it. what I'm saying? That way, instead of you, us trying to, and instead people are going to want to rush to listen to it because there's a expiration to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just an idea, but that's, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, I think I had this idea for Tyga and I, I, I or someone like that, but especially if the song is called like Countdown or the song is called like, you know, Minutes to Die or whatever, then you do something like that and you, you're also breaking a record that doesn't exist yeah it's your own rules there you know there's no rule that's what i'm saying so yeah. that's the kind of stuff that i feel like artists need to be working on is how do you deliver your your music in a way that hasn't been done before even if your song is shit yeah i'm gonna go and listen to it because of the effort of how you presented this to me which is different yeah and you gave me a sense of urgency and obviously it fits like the name of the song made sense, like whatever, something like that. And then, you know, your vinyl sales will go up because, you know, it was limited and, and yeah. things like that. But um, everyone having to follow certain rules and then being upset that they didn't get the results they wanted. Well, actually, they got average results. But that's what yeah. you get for following rules. Right, because then you're, you're just putting yourself <laughs> in that box of average. Right. That's so fucking interesting. And like, having the courage to take the risk or again it comes back to like understand these rules understand that like if you want to get that shot and the attention mm -hmm. there's almost like best practices right. like yes the best practice is figure out tiktok for your right. own artist project right the best practice is have a song that's closer to two minutes than three minutes right like there's 
singles over albums and like there we know we can see the current best practices right but that also too like that is what everyone else is doing right now and i think that art gets stuck if you don't break rules right so like when you said like the like stream it like the countdown type thing and things like that like i don't know there wouldn't have been an ipad or if I, and there wouldn't have been an ipod right if a Walkman wasn't there first, right? right? But you see the Walkman and you're like, okay, cool, but this can be better. Right. So we see what music is right now and I'm here for it. I love the fact that I can pull out my phone and listen to anything I want, right. but it's also on art and artists and everybody around it to understand where we're at currently, but right. then also disrupt it and be like, all right, well, some of this sucks. There's an art to delivering your art, right? <laughs> when, you, when you provide music, or art, it shouldn't. It shouldn't make you think. Um, oh, I never. I didn't think about this. Mm. It should make you say, "I didn't think about this this way." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's why your favorite lyrics are like the simplest ones. You're like, "Damn!" Like, I didn't like. Everyone's thought it, but I didn't think about it this way. Yeah. And it, when it makes you like, "Wow, that was right in front of me," but I didn't think about it. Yeah. And so figuring out how to have these common tools that everyone has. But then doing it completely differently, yep. that's, that's art. I did a campaign for someone a few months ago, and um, we, I, we decided to use Venmo <clears throat> to promote the record. Sick. And what we, did, what we did is we sent everyone 50 cents. And, then it, and we just put the name of the artist and the song in the, <laughs> in the info. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And it was a tool that everyone has and everyone has access to, but no one's just thought about using it in a different way. And, you know, the crazy thing about Venmo is you get money, you're going to look at your phone and you get yeah. money from someone you don't know. You're going to be like, who is this? And then you're going to read the name of the person and the name of the song. I don't care if you don't go listen to the song, but at least it's you know, in your head. You've yeah. seen it. And for 50 cents, I'm going to send it to a thousand people. That's, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Five, yeah, How many 500 people, bucks. 500 people know my name and know the song and I'm popping up on their phone. You know, that's, that's better than any Facebook ad. I was going to say the cost of acquisition on a, like getting some, an impression is right. way higher than that. Depending and it shows on the up campaign. in other people's feed. You know, people on Venmo right. can see other people's stuff. And so. you have word of mouth. And somebody's going to talk about it. Yeah. As soon as somebody talks about it, that alone. Yeah. Here's so, a question. Yes. Oh, if you had something. No, I was just going to say, it's just like, Using the tools in the way that no one's thought of is, is it, that's that's the art of marketing. I fucking love that, and I also think like I can't really press you on that further to say how does somebody do that? What else? Because right. like that's on you. Right. Like it's you have to look at that, and you have to you have to see where that that hole is of like right. what what isn't somebody doing or like there there isn't a formula there isn't something that you can follow to that like you right. can't there isn't a rule on how to break rules or how right. to look at it differently my question for you is the more and more i'm understanding you as a person and understanding what you do and what you're good at do you like how do you keep that going how do you keep that faucet of creativity flowing because like that has to be how do you wake up every day and look at the artists yeah. and the campaigns that you have and be like how do I disrupt yet again today? Like that's, um, that's got to be hard. It's, it's hard. But since I was a kid, I like being different. Mm. I, 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 you know, um, I quit drinking mm. super easily because I just wanted to be different. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was, the, it, was, it was such a hard, like I thought it would be a hard choice, but I was just like, everyone drinks. I'm just going to stop drinking now. And it was just because I wanted to be different. And when I when I'm marketing, I want to be different. Mm. I don't want to do anything that everyone else is doing. I do wake up every fucking day like on fire. I'm the most annoying person in the world. I wake up, I'm fucking jet. I'm like running around. Alexa's telling me my horoscope. I'm, yeah. fucking, I'm not. I'm just on fire. As soon as I wake up, my my job is hey, like what's the craziest thing you can think we can do with this? Right. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that, that that's what I do, but I take care of myself. I take care of my mental health a lot. Anything that I, uh, that affects my energy or like I try and stay away. Like I'm very conscious of my, my, my mental space. Yeah. And anything that I feel that fucks with that energy, I'm like, nah, I don't want it. It could be, sometimes it's like, 
it could be an instant sometimes like someone on instagram I'm like i fucking hate your energy i'm unfollowing you I, dude. Your, your post just puts me in a bad mood i dude. don't want to look at you anymore no i fucking feel that yeah yeah and yeah. that is like i think that your career and your application is such a good example right but i think anybody creating like that's such a great thing to be aware of because when you're in a position where you need to make something right. every day or, or come up with ideas or right. anything like that your energy is so important and it sounds silly but like whatever that takes to be in the good headspace and not the bad 100 percent. Like, like the, the you know the, they used to say that you know you're the average of like yeah five five people you surround yourself with. yeah which is so fucking stupid really i like it no because you're the average of everything around you not the five people oh i like that you're the average of like the 10 pages you follow you're the average of the 10 shows you watch you're the average of you know the 10 meals you eat you know what i'm saying you're the average of all these things you know there's some people i know online that that i talk to and and their influence is stronger to me than people i hang out with every day the people around me are so fucking badass um they keep me hungry yeah um i look at what they're doing and the things they're they're up to and the changes they're making and i i'm like i have a lot of catching up to do and so i'm hungry i'm gonna get there you know i remember i was talking to one of my friends i don't know why this just popped in my head but i think two years ago or three years ago in Tel Aviv and I was talking to one of my friends and he was, you know, something came up and he was like, uh, he was talking about investing, I think it was a hundred million for, to help save the environment. And I said something, I was like, I don't know if that's the best thing, you know, to invest in. And he said, no offense, Moody, but you don't have a hundred million uh, or <laughs> Or some some along those lines, and I was like, "Yep, you're right. I should shut the fuck up." Holy <laughs> shit. And um, and I and he was like, he's like, you don't understand. Like my head game is completely different than where you're at, Moody. To you, this might seem like not the best place to invest, but to me, that's the most thing I'm passionate about right now. I was like, I want to care about the environment like that. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. And um, and yeah, and so and and and. You know, although that might have been a negative conversation, the fire it fucking lit was so crazy that I was like, I want that to be part of my average environment. Yep. So that has that push on me. Like every time I see this person's post, I'm like, I got to fucking work more. Dude. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh my God. You, that story, the way you said that, like, I know that feeling so wholeheartedly. Right. I have a different application, but I remember like I, I really like cars mm. and I was talking to a pretty wealthy friend that's bought himself the the top right. tier of any of the dream cars. Right. And we were talking about like a, a Bugatti Chiron. Yeah. And it was like, I think it was like 27 million or some oh, stupid shit, yeah. right? And I was like talking so much shit. I was just like, who the fuck spends that much money on that right. car? Right. And he kind of did the same thing where he was like, no offense, dude, but he's like, if you're spending that much money on a car, you have every other car you want to. So you don't need to worry about what- You're, you're not saving yeah, up to buy it. Right. And like, I different application, right. but it was like this check where I was just like, oh, fuck, I'm not right. thinking big enough. Right. And it was this similar thing where like, it's those humbling moments where right. you're like, that is so small minded of me to say that yeah, and think yeah, like that. And yeah. I love, I love being challenged like that. Yeah. And honestly, uh, my last, uh, hack of how I stay creative is I surround myself with people that are way more creative than me and wow. way smarter than me and way younger than me. Wow. Um, I will sit in a room with a 16 year old and learn and I will just sit and learn from them. Yeah. I have no problems at all. Um, Real talk, that's my target demo for all my artists. Yeah. So who the fuck am I to ha- to think that I know more than them? Dude. So li- I literally will hang out with, like, <laughs> that's the other thing with fucking rules. They always told you to make, you know, you should always be uh, the youngest person in the room or some whatever that quote some is. Shit, yeah. That, you know, you should be, that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. That's fucking bullshit. Sometimes you're the oldest person in the room and you learn more than anybody because you have the experience of knowing that you can learn from anyone versus someone who's young, who feels that they know everything. Yeah. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, like having that humility and understanding it. Yeah. Dude, I love that. That's so cool. Because again, it's like just that self-awareness enough. Like it's like you want to be the best. You want to continuously grow. Right. 
but that's not being cocky and that's not no. like that's that's always taking the second to humble yourself right. and be like okay cool so if i want this i need to understand all of these people yeah i think it was two years ago i realized that i wanted to better serve artists in order to do that i wanted to feel what it was like to be an artist today i used to put out music like 10 years ago yeah and um uh, and at the time it was you know beatport and soundcloud you yeah know, you, you did like repost networks and shit like that yeah. like that's what you did to yeah. like you know get your music around but i was like i'm i'm here i am working with hundreds of artists but i for me to better serve them and understand them i don't know what it's like to be an artist today so two years ago i was like not this October, October before. Oh, it was a year and a half ago. I was like, let me let me put out a record. Let me see what it's like. Whoa. And I got to feel what it's like to be nervous the, the, the day it comes out, what it's like to open up your Spotify for artists and Apple Music for artists and check your listeners every day, every minute. You know, I remember New Year's, I opened up the app to see who was listening to my song during the countdown. You know, like oh my God. Shit, shit you would never that wouldn't cross your mind if you were only on the marketing side. Yeah. What was it like to like get a thousand streams, get ten thousand streams, get half a million streams? Like I went through all those stages mm. and um I realized now like why certain artists, if I ask them to post, they won't. You know, now I now I understand. Yeah. You know, now I understand like when when they don't get certain placements, how they feel. Now I understand when like you run a campaign, what 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 do they want to hear? How do they want to be spoken to? And and that whole process was was one humility for sure and want to and, and to serve them better. Actually, I also just wanted to be an artist. <laughs> I mean, dude, yeah. I was like, why do I have to follow rules? Let me put out music, see what's up. Dude, that's so cool. I, I love that. And I, I love, I mean, I'm just gonna say everything you just said back. I love that. <laughs> That's great. I love that. This is good. Yeah. This is great energy. <laughs> I don't know. Like sometimes I'll do that or I'll listen to something yeah. and I'll agree with it so much or I'll yeah. love it that I'll basically just paraphrase exactly <laughs> what you said. And I'm like, I didn't add anything to this. I literally just said, yes, I understand what you said and I liked it. Yeah. Um, that's really cool though. I like yeah. I just overall the the mindset that you have and the energy that you take and approach music with is is really refreshing and again like i didn't fucking know you like it, it gives me so much hope yeah to be like cool there's still people in this game that are trying to push boundaries and break rules for the right reasons because i think when folks like us that yeah. try to operate on a high level of energy like there can be those times where you see the shit that's succeeding and you see like the oh, scummy oh people that are doing it and you're just like what's the fucking point i, I mean so. that's 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 the reason we got into it i mean the reason you know, I always hated what was on the radio uh, and I was like, there's so many better artists. Why aren't they on the radio? Yeah. And, you know, that was the original mission I seeked out to to solve, you know, when I was 17. Now it's the same thing. You see shit that's blowing up and you're like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though. And uh, but but it's, it's so funny because the, the irony of it is if it was like, I know artists that I love and as soon as they make it, I disconnect. I know, dude. I know it's so fucking hypocritical. It sucks. It's, it's so, so hypocritical. That's that's the. It's so annoying. We're so annoying. I know. It's it's fucked. Like as soon as an artist makes it, I'm like, I'm over you. It's <laughs> fucked, dude. You because you like go back to the old mixtape and you're like, yeah. you're so much better. Yeah. Then. Um. But then again, if we're if we're listening to our own advice and all that, it's like yeah. that. Art, we don't know what they defined as success. Right. So maybe they sold out, and maybe it's all fake and shitty now. Right. Or maybe that to them is like, cool. I finally got to drop my fucking magnum opus of a project. Right. And I don't give a shit if you, Andrew, or Moody, or anyone else doesn't like it, and you like the mixtape more. I, that's I don't great. Give a shit. So fuck it. Dude, I think we did the damn thing. This was amazing. Yeah, it was great. I think it was uh, it was organic. It just, you know, we were just flowing. We, yeah. we got the ideas across. Yeah. Uh, it ended up transitioning pretty good. Pretty well, pretty well. I mean, I feel like there's a billion other topics we could probably get into. So maybe yeah. we check back in. Maybe <laughs> we tell, I mean, yeah, there's the, the one that we, is... Uh, nfts and music and blockchain and crypto right. and all that yeah. that that is definitely its own entire episode yeah, yeah. Um, uh, i'm i'm uh, you know when we, when we started this we said you know what are you what's exciting you that's for sure the most thing that's exciting me now yeah. um that's because that shit is 
that shit's going to change everything if it picks up the right way. Yes, I agree. I think my my one statement to that, maybe right. the, the preview to us having a different conversation, right. is I think that right now, anybody that's smart and that's embracing technology and looking at it, simple step, learn how to make your own NFT. That's all you need to do right now. That's, mm. that's my feeling right now. And again, this is the, it'll go crazy if we go too deep, but I, I think that it's just something to pay I, attention to. I just to. love the... I love the coin side of it. Like artists having their own currencies. Mm. That's what I love. Oh, wow. That's where. That's what I... Because I don't have to have this in here anymore, do I? Let's do... Uh, well, here. So okay. this will be... That's the preview. We'll probably okay. have another episode where you and I talk okay, all about so, this. So, so to so, end this podcast, right. thank you for doing it. Where can everyone find you? Everywhere. Moody Jones. Uh, Done. Thank you so much. Great episode. Boom. <laughs> There it is, Moody's episode. I hope you liked that one. I really, really liked the way that he looked at everything. I walked away from that so inspired. If you want us to do another episode where we deep dive into NFTs and crypto and how that's going to change music, let us know because I would certainly love to have that conversation. And just in general, if you liked this podcast, if this was the first episode you listened to, or if it was the 50th episode you've listened to, there's a couple things you can do that really, really help me keep the podcast going. The first one is just sharing it with a friend any way you want to, be it social media, sending a text, telling them in person. Word of mouth is so massively helpful. It's really the best way that anything can grow, and it's so easy and natural to do. So if you know someone that you think would like this podcast, I'm super serious. Take a second, let them know about it. It would mean the world to me. If you want to go above and beyond and really help the podcast grow and maintain and upgrade, there is a Patreon. That's patreon.com slash where are all my friends. And any amount of money there helps so, so much. That just about says it. As always, I'll be back with another episode next week. Thanks for listening.